Hello and welcome to this very brief video on how to build a Raspberry Pi laptop using a Nanook 909, in this case, you could go with something bigger if you wanted, potentially smaller, a Nanook 909 waterproof and super tough case. You spin this around and get it open, which is usually very easy unless you're being filmed. And you can see here all of, whoop, the components. I get the laptop out, all the little pieces out. You can see we've got uh, everything that we need here <clears throat> to uh, run the Raspberry Pi and everything else. Let me go through all the components so you know what it is and how you can build it yourself. Uh, first of all, this is a Nanook 909 waterproof hard case. It's got a foam insert. I've removed all that, obviously. Um, and the next thing that I used is this Strenco uh, self-adhesive uh, tape. So what, what you actually get is, um, actually that's not it. What you, <laughs> but I've linked to everything in the description, all the components, all the parts, including the double-sided Velcro tape uh, that I used for all of it. <clears throat> um, and so what we also have here, let me just go ahead and switch it on so you can see how it works. First, I'm gonna tap the battery button, then it comes on, then I'm going to activate. Here we go, I'm just gonna turn on the Raspberry Pi computer itself. So what are all the things that, uh, that this laptop consists of? Well, the first thing is the Raspberry Pi here, used a 4B, which is a, it's an eight gigabyte model, but I increased that to 256 gigabytes, and of course used the long duration, like many writes and reads, kind of expensive flat, uh, memory uh, that I put in there. <clears throat> so there's that. Um, then the next thing was this Zendur battery. Uh, now the most important thing, and this is, it took a while to figure this out. Um, that battery is the X6. And so it's got, uh, how many milliamp hours? I can't remember. Something like 20,000, 30,000. It's, it's pretty high. Um, but the most important thing is that um, it's actually a UPS, an uninterrupted power supply. And what that allows you to do when it starts to get low is plug it in and begin to charge it without it momentarily switching over to a charge mode, which turns off the Raspberry Pi. So the most important thing is that your power source is uninterrupted. So it's gotta be a, um, a UPS, which this one is. So what you can see, I don't know if you can see, what you can see is that it's still, it's got a, a, a percentage that, um, that it'll show you, and so you'll know when it's getting low and you can go plug it in. Okay, what else is here? Uh, what we have is, we also have a bunch of little cables and tie downs that I've got, they're Velcro, so if you use your double-sided Velcro tape, the Velcro tie downs, the last little bit at the end, you can use to stick it all down. So we have a 15 centimeter USB um, C cable, which is quite short, and <clears throat> for power. Uh, and then there's the Mazer Pi power switch, which is this thing right here. Because if you don't have one of those, then it's continually powering the Raspberry Pi, even when the Raspberry Pi is off. So you actually have to be able to switch the thing off after you power the Raspberry Pi down. Uh, and the next thing is the case. So I used a Geekworm Raspberry Pi 4 aluminum case. Um, so it's got like these passive heat sinks and the heat sink tape or whatever it is, that adhesive that you apply to the Raspberry Pi chips. And then it cools it off here, <clears throat> as long as it's not shut. Uh, and then the monitor, you can use, I mean, you can use any monitor that you want as long as it's a portable monitor. The problem, or at least a very thin one, the problem is that most monitors have very thick bezels as, and, and they also have like, they're, they're super thick and the plastic is very thick. You don't want that. What you want is something like this, which again, everything is linked in the video description. This is a Corky, a 10.1 inch. It's actually a 2K monitor, so the resolution is really high. Um, the only issue here is that it requires uh, separate video in and power in. <clears throat> so I'll show you how to deal with that. But you can use anything as long as it fits in your case. Now the issue with these Nanook cases, they're great. They're waterproof, they float, they're almost indestructible, but the back, like the, the back of the monitor in this case is flat. 
um, but the case here at the top on the inside is definitely not flat. So I shaved off a tiny bit of the plastic on a couple of little parts of it, but it's still almost, it's 99% intact and it's still incredibly tough. You could drop it, you could throw it, you can do anything and it's, it'll be fine. Um, but you just have to check the size of the case to ensure that the monitor is going to fit and that the back, the, whatever the monitor is going to stick to, is flat enough that the Velcro tape actually works. And it works pretty well in this case. I can peel it off. Um, I probably don't want to, I don't really want to do that on camera, but you can, the whole thing is disassemblable, um, can be disassembled quite easily. And this is, I built it with my daughter, so you can see the, uh, <laughs> you can see the background that we're using for the desktop. Um, and then uh, for the cabling here to uh, provide the video signal as, uh, as well as the power, um, what we used was this Yao Diaud Mini HDMI. It's got a 90 degree left turn, and you have to ensure, obviously, that that 90 degree turn is going to face the right way. You don't want it facing up, you want it facing down. So there's a, it was a ton of work to figure out how to do this, because you have to know which way the connectors need to face, obviously, and so you need some pretty good pictures or descriptions of all the products, <laughs> of all the components here that are in it. Um, anyway, so this will uh, power um, or rather, this will, this will drive this high resolution pretty well. Um, and then there is a, because obviously the Raspberry Pi has a micro HDMI in, and so we need the converter here from the regular HDMI size down to the micro HDMI. Not mini HDMI, micro HDMI. Um, and then what do we have? We have a couple of other things that just connect all the stuff here. So to power, um, to power, the monitor, I used this SunGuy um, half a meter, uh, 90 degree micro USB cable. Um, and so that is, uh, so this, the side of it is micro USB, so it's in uh, there. And, um, and I think this is universal, so you can actually switch it. Anytime you can get a universal adapter, do it. If it, right, if it has to be um, facing left or right, it's just gonna be annoying. Uh, what else? So the cool thing about this is that the speaker is actually a speaker phone. So it's this uh, speaker phone. It's the EMI uh, M0 conference speaker. And so it's actually got like a directional mic and it can pick up where you are and, um, and, and it works really well. So you can actually do video conferencing um, if you plug in a camera into it, which I haven't built into it, but you you could somewhere, you could position one somewhere. There's still some space in there. You could put something like a camera and prop it up or whatever. Um, but you could do Skype calling and stuff like that by using the, um, the, conference, uh, the conference speakerphone. And the sound is great, actually. It's got a really nice speaker, and so you can go to YouTube or Netflix. Uh, when going to something like Netflix, actually within the Raspberry Pi, the Raspbian OS, you have to enable uh, whatever the digital rights management options are. I don't think it comes out of the box like that, but I figured it out. You can probably figure it out. Uh, so, you're, so you or your kids can watch Netflix on this or something else, Disney, probably. Um, the next thing that we got was this Logitech keyboard and mouse. So this is wireless. Um, and so let me just turn it all on and you can see that the light turns on and then it becomes active. You can also use touch pads with this, but depending on the make and model, what you need to do is go into the Raspbian OS and figure out how to make it all work and connect, but a little time put into it. I'm sure you can do anything that you want. So that's it. Everything is Velcro there. It's all ready to go. It works. The battery has only been cycled, maybe 30 times or something like that, and it lasts for hours. It will drive the Raspberry Pi, drive the monitor, and <clears throat> the 10-inch monitor, which looks great. It's 2K resolution, and uh, I've installed, just to test it out, I installed uh, Ubuntu on it as a first go and had some fun playing around with that, and then installed. It didn't work perfectly, but it worked fine. You can do all kinds of stuff on it, uh, but the, obviously the Raspberry Pi is built uh, to work with the, uh, the Raspbian uh, version of Linux, and it works really well. 
and it's lots of fun to play around with. And you can add components, you can remove components, you can make your own if you want. If you wanted, you could get a bigger case, but this case works pretty well. And because of all the weight with the battery right there, it's still it's still surprisingly light. Uh, it doesn't tip over, so it's perfect. It's waterproof. You could chuck it in a lake; it floats. Uh, you can drop it on the ground or throw it down the stairs. Everything's going to be fine. That's it. Hope this was helpful. Uh, providing a link below to all the different components you'll need. I spent a lot of time and a disturbing amount of money uh, trying out different things, cables, different lengths, etc. Uh, until I settled on this mix of components, but I'm sure that you can figure out something that will work for you. And then you've got your Raspberry Pi. Normally you would turn it off. You've got your portable Raspberry Pi laptop that is essentially indestructible. Thanks. See ya. And good luck.